In this video, I will show you how to check the accuracy of your torque wrench. Now, normally if you take care of these torque wrench, you don't drop it and you store it with the lowest setting, then these could last years and years without any problem. But if you uh, have dropped it or done something that you're not supposed to do it, then the calibration might be off. And to verify that, what you need to do is uh, figure out um, the accuracy on this torque wrench by doing some calculation. Over here I have written out the formulas you need to know. Torque is equal to length times width. Now if you're doing inch-pound calculation the length is an inch and the weight in pounds and you just multiply the length times width and you get the inch-pound. Now if you're figuring out the foot-pound and your length is in inches then you need to actually multiply the weight in pound and divide by 12. By dividing by 12, you'll, you'll get the uh, foot-pound value. Okay. Now, the reason you need to do this uh, calculation is because we're going to use um, uh, weights, known weights to compare to the setting on this torque wrench. With the length here, okay, what you need to do is measure over here. Measure from the center of where the socket's going to be all the way to a midpoint on the handle. In this case mine is 18 inches. Okay. Now where I chose this midpoint on the handle is really um, just a guess here because it doesn't matter because you're going to be calculating how many foot-pounds or inch-pounds you need to apply. So as long as I know what is the length all the way to this line from where the center of the socket all the way to where the line is that's what we need to record okay so that's a known length so make sure you measure that accurately okay now that you have the length and you have weights uh, you can calculate the torque now the weights that you can use is uh, it can be exercise uh, weights or dumbbells or something uh, that is in the range of what the torque you want to check at. So, uh, so you can use weights that are 20 pounds, 30 pounds, 8 pounds. But one thing I, I would recommend is that the weights you get is that you weigh it on a uh, scale, like a digital scale if you have one, and make sure that you know what is the actual weight of those uh, uh, of those objects that you're using because even though you might have a 20 pound uh, weight uh, it might only be 19 pound or it could be 21 pounds so make sure you know exactly what the real weight is of those items okay now after you have the weights and you have the length what you want to do is calculate it now you have this length here 18 inch and if I say put a 50 pound weight on it you multiply that by that divided by 12 and then you'll get the foot-pound. So that is going to be the actual foot-pound applied at this point on the line when I hang that weight on this handle. Okay, so what you want to do is that once you have that set up, you want to set it as close to that setting as you can. Okay and then you want to hang that weight on here and then if you have a vice grip or a bolt you can put the socket on to hold this in place it needs to be parallel okay it needs to hang parallel okay I'll show you the setup I have done here this is my 3 8 inch it's, it's just a setup to show you what I mean okay I, I know there's not enough weight to actually test it but uh, you can see the uh, the end of the torque wrench is clamped on a, a vice grip. I have marked the center of the handle. I've added weight to it. And what you want to do is adjust the setting on here to close to what you've calculated over here. So, for example, if let's say this was set up for 50 inch pound okay the scale is set up for 50 inch pound and you have a weight 
that's calculated, okay, using this formula, you calculate it to be also 50 foot pound and it clicks when you put the weight on, it clicks exactly at 50 foot pound, then you know this is accurate. Okay. And what I recommend is you actually test several ranges on this torque wrench so that you would have a measurement along the scale here. Now one thing to note is that typically on these type of uh, click type uh, torque wrench, the lower 10-15% of the scale, the low end of it, uh, the tolerance is, is a lot wider than the tolerance up at the higher end of the uh, torque setting. So keep that in mind. And normally these are spec'd out at about 4% tolerance uh, from the factory. So if you have a setting on a scale that is within 4% of what you calculated, okay, then that will be good. Now one more thing I want to show you is that on these click type torque wrench, here's the handle, I removed the, um, the cap. There's actually a plastic cap on here. And what I'm showing you is that there's actually an, an Allen key inside. And there's also a bolt that's on the outside. That bolt is, uh, I believe, 11 16th inch, but you need a thin wall socket to loosen it if you want to. And I don't recommend you guys doing this. But you loosen that bolt, and then you can use an Allen key and you can actually change the calibration on this. Now, if you don't have any precise test equipment at home, uh, which most of us don't, uh, I don't recommend you doing this because you'll throw the calibration way out and then you need to send it in for calibration. And most uh, labs that do these type of calibration would charge you anywhere from $25, $35, $50, not including shipping. So. But I just want to show you how these things get calibrated. So once you adjust it, uh, I believe if you put an Allen key in here and you turn it clockwise, it will tighten up the spring, so increase the torque. If you turn it counterclockwise, then it will actually decrease the um, torque on that. And then once you're done, you need to tighten that bolt. Okay. So, but that's what I want to show you, and again, uh, I don't recommend you doing any type of adjustment on the end of these uh, unless uh, you know exactly what you're doing, but here's a setup to show you how you can check the accuracy of your torque wrench. Okay, thank you for watching.